report, they talk about floors and ceilings. And believe it or not, I'm not about to address yet again salary caps. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. I find this baseball team to be in a peculiar spot, kind of a a nether world between needing floor and needing ceiling because I still feel like I don't know if they're in the process of continuing a very long rebuild, this now being year five, or if they're ready to just start solidifying pieces and going with the most predictable performances at each position. And let me explain what I mean when I say that. If you're talking about what would excite you about the 2024 season, you'd probably start with the fact that O'Neill Cruz belted his fifth home run more than any player anywhere in baseball so far this spring. Even if it's just on the fact that he's healthy, that he's out there, he's playing shortstop, he's running the bases, he's doing all that other stuff. We knew he was going to hit. He can hit in his sleep. And when he hits, he can hit for power in his sleep. He can do that. That ball that he put out in Dunedin yesterday, if you've seen it, it's the equivalent of just a, a, I don't want to say check swing, but just a routine follow through. And it lofts up into the sky toward right center and just keeps going. Yeah, there's. There's an element there of, you know, grapefruit ball and the winds down in Florida. Although, again, this one wasn't in Bradenton. It was in Dunedin. But that's what he does. And when he does that, you get excited because you think about numbers that haven't previously been attained. You think about him having a, a chance at a full 162-game schedule. And then you try to extrapolate numbers. And yeah, it, it gets the juices flowing. It's great stuff. I would... Probably look at it as an even better example, not a better player, but a better example at someone like Leo Verpiguero, where I say, here's someone who, when you see the ball come off his bat at times, it's got a little bit of that freakish component as well. He's not a big dude like Cruz. He's not going to have the natural, you know, just human power slash torque, but the ball jumps off the bat. It's irrational in the way that it appears. And you think, wow, I mean, there now, now we're really talking here. It's a middle infield where we can start extrapolating numbers and getting excited. Well, this is the kind of thing that you're usually doing a little sooner in a rebuild. And you're saying instead, since I just brought up second base, I'm just going to go with Jared Triolo there. Triolo doesn't, look as spectacular, but he's more solid. He's more dependable. He's more consistent defensively. And maybe he'll end up being that offensively as well. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to chill here and go with Triolo because I need to know what I have as a manager, as a GM, whatever. And that's where I'm kind of torn on this team because I feel like I could go around the diamond And put somebody in every position where I'd at least be able to sleep at night. I I wouldn't be worried about somebody going 0 for 5 with 4Ks and leaving people all over the base pass just because they're in a phase. I'd rather go with, and, and that's where the debate can come into play. You can do it by position. Heck, you can do it through the pitching staff. Or you can say, man, I'm sorry. Look, I'm not about to pump this out to the press or to the fans, but we're not there yet. And we still need to expose, for better or worse, what we have in a Piguero, what we have in a Luis Ortiz. And if you want another example, even though he's not younger, he's not some kind of prospect or whatever, there's a Rowdy Telez. I had a talk with Rowdy when I was in Bradenton a couple weeks ago. 
And it was on a subject similar to this. Like, what are you? Who are you really? Are you the guy that hit the 35 bombs for the Brewers and had everybody in baseball talking about you there that one season? Or are you the guy that fell dramatically off, hurt by a couple of injuries, and had everyone just kind of reset the bar for who you are? And instead of trying to get defensive about it, the guy's got a great personality, by the way. If, if he hits even a little bit, Pittsburgh's going to love him. Instead of trying to say, hey, listen, I am that guy. I just need to be healthy, whatever. All he said was, we'll see. Big smile on his face. He didn't hesitate. He didn't apologize for the season that he just had. He didn't start listing the injuries and the impact on his swing and everything else. He just said, we'll see. We'll see. I'd like to show everybody that I'm that guy. He didn't make any promises, didn't make any predictions. But he's also that. I can't be convinced that Ben Charrington wouldn't have taken him for just that reason. Meaning that that ceiling, that upside, that potential. So even if this isn't a discussion point now related to this roster, I have a feeling it's going to become one because you're going to see situations. Maybe you could even throw Henry Davis into that. You want to put Yasmani Grandal back there? Let him play more often than not just because you, you don't have to cringe every time there's a, a slider thrown with a guy on third base. I mean, okay, but you've got a 1-1 one, one in the fold. You got to see what the 1-1 one, one has. I just feel like this team's going to have to maintain some sort of almost awkward mix of the two concepts for this season to really be maximized. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone and you do the rest it's a ton of fun it's a great meal and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in pittsburgh north shore tavern right across federal street from pnc park today's j1q comes from steven who says dk have you heard tyler glass now is going to be the dodgers Opening day starter. What could have been, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I usually don't engage in this sort of thing, meaning myself. I don't do a whole lot of, well, if this had happened with Glass now so many years ago, and then this had happened, and then that had happened, and you'd have, you know, Garrett Cole and Mitch Keller and everything else. The fact is a lot of other stuff happened around the glass now situation. And for that matter, the Cole situation and a lot of different people changed positions. A lot of different people came and went, I believe. And I feel pretty strongly about this since I heard it from Bob Nutting himself, that the main reason that he cleaned house with the previous administration is the glass now trade, meaning sending glass now Austin Meadows and Shane Boss to the Rays for whatever was left of Chris Archer. That's an epic swing and a miss, no matter what the other three do, if only because of the horrific read that you had on where Archer was, which even the most casual fan of the sports analytics could have told you was going to be disastrous based on where Archer was headed. I hear a lot of people uh, occasionally refer back to that trade and say, well, okay, hang on. Which of those three really, da, da, da. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The trade's bad just on the one end. Now, never mind that Tyler, to his credit, has battled back from Tommy John. He's all the way back. And he's ready to make an apparently very big impression 
on baseball's most expensive roster. Good for him. If you've had the the blessing of getting to meet this young man, you'd know it's really, really easy to get into his corner. This is someone who's really smart, who's really ambitious, uh, super thoughtful as a pitcher for all the natural gifts that he has on the mound. Uh, he's also got the head to accompany it. What screwed him up was that in Pittsburgh, they they kept trying to add different pitches to his arsenal and kept having him try to expand something that didn't need to be expanded and worse by far. And mercifully, this ended. This came from the front office, by the way, not from Ray Searage. This emphasis on just pitching to contact. And I know that's become kind of a swear word with his fan base, but it should. The swear term or whatever. It should. There's there's never any rational reason to ask a pitcher with that kind of stuff to throw at bats. Miss the bats. That's what Cole did. That's what Charlie Morton did. That's what Tyler did when he got down there. So a really, really big lesson was learned. A lot of people lost their jobs in the process, including a good man and a good pitching coach in Searage. But for this one, this is this is a good ending, if you will, or a good continuation of the story. I'm happy for Tyler. I hope he does extremely well. I, I'd, I'd love to see him become everything that he can be, even if it means a summer line of everybody in Pittsburgh bringing it up again and again and again and again. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 